Hi everyone, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, and like this video if you end up liking it. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about whirlwinds. Um, this is something I've actually been thinking about since last year, since I started coming across these second coming timelines. And um, this term has kind of come up in my mind from time to time. Um, specifically as it relates to the second coming and uh, and being translated, you know, caught up, uh, quickened. So I want to kind of like dive into this and um, and look into this one particular event that I found significant. Um, so first of all, a whirlwind, according to Wikipedia, says whirlwinds are subdivided into two main types: the great or major whirlwinds and the lesser or minor whirlwinds. The first category includes tornadoes, water spouts, and land spouts. And then of course the, the lesser ones would be dust devils, steam devils, snow devils, and so on. So <clears throat> the event that I'm referring to is this right here. Uh, this is a picture from the August 11th, 1999, Salt, downtown Salt Lake City tornado that happened. And, you know, I already just kind of off the bat, uh, I realized this today, the, the fact that it happened on the 11th, um, I thought was kind of interesting because if you'll remember uh, President Nielsen, November of last year in the 11th month, he did this video, the give thanks video, where he asked all of us to give thanks uh, for seven days. And the length of the video was 11 minutes. And I know that there's members of the church that made comments on that. And I think rightly so. 11 seems to be kind of a important number, an interesting number. Um, so we had this tornado hit downtown Salt Lake on the 11th okay, of August, 1999. And this, for me, was one of those days that you just never forget because at the time I was living in the Salt Lake area. In fact, I, I, I'm from Murray, and I was, um, at the time, going to high school, and we were doing two-a-day football practices. Uh, school hadn't started yet, but it was about to, and I was in the locker room, and someone came in and they were talking about how a tornado hit downtown Salt Lake and that just like blew me away I was I was stunned I was like what a tornado was downtown downtown Salt Lake because all growing up you know I never had a fear of tornadoes because although tornadoes uh, can and they do happen in Utah they they're not like very common at all uh, they're nothing like the Midwest where I live now. And for it to hit a downtown area, you know, uh, which I, it, I believe that has happened in the past. Um, in fact, I think Oklahoma City was hit one time by a tornado. But, you know, it, it's already rare enough for a tornado to hit a downtown area, let alone Salt Lake City, where, you know, the downtown area is right up against the mountains. You know, it's kind of tucked up in kind of a corner um, of the valley. So I found it, you know, very interesting. And still looking back on it today, I, I equate this to um, being of the same significance as when the angel Moroni dropped his trumpet off the Salt Lake Temple, which I, I didn't even know was possible. Um, you know, when that happened, that happened at a very interesting time because that happened um, as the pandemic was was breaking out and before the temples were closed and before missionary work basically came to a standstill. So I, I really think that it'd be wise of us, for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, to take a look at these events and realize that they're significant. And the tornado in 1999. I think it was. I think it was one of those events. So, if you look at the path here of the tornado, started 
southwest of downtown and then traveled northeast, which is typical for tornadoes in the, the northern hemisphere. There's nothing unusual about that. Um, however, um, I'm going to link this or I'm going to put this link in the description box. I would encourage you to watch this video. It's called The Secrets of the Salt Lake City Tornado, put out by Fox 13 News, Utah. And they talk about some of the unusual aspects of the tornado. Um, one of which is that it, it happened, it like started really, really fast compared to a typical tornado. Um, there wasn't very much warning time, like there wasn't any warning time at all, essentially. Whereas uh, the typical tornado here in the Midwest, you, you do, there is more time to prepare. You, you start to see a rotation um, in a storm and, you know, you can have some heads up, but there really wasn't any with this tornado, which, you know, that brings to mind for me uh, the second coming, because aren't we told that it's going to come quickly as a thief in the night? Or at least for those who aren't watching, it's going to come as a thief in the night. Uh, people during those days are going to be marrying and giving in marriage and <clears throat> not even aware, really, that uh, what season they're in. And it's going to hit them like a flood, just like in Noah's days. So that's another interesting aspect of this tornado, just how quickly it hit. Now, going back to uh, the path that it took. It traveled up northeast and it hit the <clears throat> what at the time was called the, the Delta Center, which is where the, the Utah Jazz play. <clears throat> um, there's a couple interesting things about this, okay, because the Delta Center, it's a sports arena. It's a place, uh, if you saw my one of my last videos, it's a place of distraction right we all know people that probably spend a little bit too much time memorizing sports stats and being caught up in the the entertainment and distractions of this world the tornado hit the delta center and as you may or may not know uh, delta is a letter in the greek alphabet and it's shaped like a pyramid right and uh if you're familiar with uh the modern day Gadiant robbers and modern day secret combinations, pyramids are significant to these people, especially the top of the pyramid where you have the all seeing eye, which, uh, you know, it, that doesn't really represent the God that we follow and worship it for them. It represents a different God. And, um, what happened was the, the tornado went right over it and it tore off the roof or at least uh, part of the roof of the delta center it then continued on um, right here you can see temple square okay um, i actually have a church article talking about it temple square closed for two days several trees were downed no damage to the salt lake temple which remained open uh, for scheduled weddings and I want to just kind of like, I want to highlight that weddings because we know that one of the parables that the Savior has used for these last days and for his second coming is that it's, it's like a wedding. You think about uh, the parable of the 10 virgins. They're, they're waiting outside with their lamps. Um, they're waiting for the bridegroom to come to marry his bride, uh, the bridegroom representing Christ and the bride representing the church and you know again we don't in that parable uh no one knew when the bridegroom was gonna come uh, and so it was important for them to have extra oil for their lamps and to be ready for you know whether he came soon or whether uh he delayed some time so uh weddings and marriage is like it's a big symbol of the second coming and I believe that this tornado is related to the second coming and, and that it, it was a sign of sorts, which means that uh, things after the tornado, it, it, was a, it was a warning for things that would happen after that point, after the tornado occurred. Um, 
All right, so m moving on. So it passed by there. It went over the conference center, which was being constructed at the time. It knocked over a crane, um, which, you know, I don't know if that's significant. Uh, I, I tend to think that pretty much everything about this story is significant. Um, you know, you think about the crane, how, you know, that's something that you use to build something. And in that case, it was building something for the church. And, you know, I, I don't know if you can just kind of compare it to how we're, we're continuing to gather Israel. We're continuing to build the church. But when the Lord comes, you know, when the when he says that the harvest is over, at least for the wheat harvest, then it's over. Time's up. You know, and it's going to come as a whirlwind. I'm, I'm sure it's going to come uh, pretty quick. Even for those of us that are watching, we know that the season that we're in, but whenever it does happen, it's it's going to happen in that moment instantly. So, and then it continued on up um, past the capital, um, up into City Creek Canyon, and then it ended uh, up here in the mountains which I think that's significant because um, a lot of times in, in scripture you equate a mountain with the temple. You know, it's like when there's not an actual temple available to a prophet, the Lord will have them go up into a mountain kind of as like a, as a, a natural temple. Uh, you know, you see that in Nephi, uh, he went up to the temple to talk to the Lord. Uh, Moses went up Mount Sinai, received the Ten Commandments, and a lot of things happened there. So um, what I'm about to get into is how whirlwinds seemed to be a type in the scriptures of two things. Um, first, uh, the more obvious type, which is like destruction, <laughs> uh, devastation the anger of the Lord. Um, that That's one meaning of it, I think, in the scriptures. And I'm going to show you some examples. But another meaning is being quickened and being translated, caught up, raptured, if you want to use that word. Um, so it's interesting that this tornado, it went over, like directly over church property. It didn't damage the temple. It didn't damage uh, uh or at least not very much it didn't damage the conference center the church office building there may have been some damage i haven't looked into that too much but nothing significant um but it went right through this church area okay that's important and you know symbolically i, I think you could say it's like first you have all this damage and stuff happening to the world the the delta center gets damaged there's a hotel over here that gets damaged um, there was also one fatality that happened uh, in connection with this event. It was a man from Las Vegas, and, um, you know, that, that was very unfortunate. And um, But I think even that was kind of significant. I'm not saying making any comment on his personal worthiness, because I'm sure, you know, well, who knows? Only, only the Lord knows, but I don't think that, you know, he died because of wickedness. But I think that there is kind of a symbol there that somebody from... Las Vegas, which is a city that's associated with sin, right? <laughs> uh, Las Vegas is a sin city. Um, it's interesting that these kind of more worldly things sustain all this damage, and then it passes through church property pretty much without incident. Um, there, there was some some damage. If if I had continued on with that article, I talked about some damage to the visitor center, the North Visitor Center, and uh, t trees being toppled over, but it basically went through uh, this central hub here of the church, the, the headquarters of the church, without much incident at all. So now we switch over to, you know, I think the second meaning of whirlwinds, where as before this point, it's all about destruction. After this point, maybe this kind of symbolizes being translated and caught up and taken up into the mountain which is a holy place um and you know i'm going to do another video about being quickened and translated there you know i don't think anyone really truly knows exactly what that's going to look like i know people have their theories um 
and I'll see if I can uh, find out as much as I can about it, do a video about it. But anyway, I find that pretty fascinating. Um, let's see here. So this was a F2 for, uh, tornado, okay, um, August 11th, 1999. Uh, that date, I mean, th think about that date. That date. Uh, even, uh, just put the 11 aside. We already talked about the 11th. But I did a little calculation here, and this tornado happened uh, just like less than a year later is when the Palmyra Temple was dedicated. And for some of us that kind of um, believe that we're in the seventh seal, uh, there's a lot of us that believe that the dedication of the Palmyra Temple may have fulfilled scripture and revelation and also have opened the seventh seal. So, you know, you have this tornado that is kind of a precursor to that, it happens less than a year uh, before the temple is dedicated. And, you know, even if you, you don't really agree with that point of view, it, it's really interesting that it happened in 1999, you know, the, the last year of that uh, century and that millennium, okay? So, and then right after you have this dedication, um, and then you have, of course, the events of 2001, and then everything that's happened since that time, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's very interesting, very interesting dates. So, I'm going to go through some uh, scriptures now that I, that I found that, that talk about whirlwinds. The first one is in section 112 of the Doctrine and Covenants, and um, I'm just going to read this up here. Um, the twelve are to send the gospel and raise the warning voice to all nations and people. Uh, they are to take up their cross, follow Jesus, and feed his sheep. Those who receive the first presidency receive the Lord. Now, th this video is not about the first presidency message that just came out about getting the hokey pokey, but for anyone that's struggling with that, uh, you know, here's something that's interesting that you might want to take into consideration. Those who receive the first presidency receive the Lord. Um, now, I know that that probably most likely means like receiving them as prophets, seers, revelators, and the, the, the head of the, the Lord's true church, but I think that it also implies those who receive their counsel. And um, I, I'm not trying to make a case for that right now, um, but, you know, maybe just consider that. Darkness covers the earth, and <clears throat> only those who believe and are baptized will be saved. The first presidency and the twelve hold the keys of the dispensation of the fullness of times. Okay, going down here, <clears throat> let me find the scripture. Starting in verse 22, inasmuch as they shall humble themselves before me and abide in my word and hearken to the voice of my spirit, verily, verily, I say unto you, darkness covereth the earth and gross darkness the minds of the people. You guys, we are definitely living in a time when people's minds are darkness and and really gross too. Uh, continuing on, all the and all flesh has become corrupt before my face. Behold, <clears throat> vengeance cometh speedily upon the, in the inhabitants of the earth. A day of wrath, a day of burning. Uh, right now, this year is definitely a time of burning, and I've done videos about that. A day of desolation, a day of weeping, of mourning, and of lamentation. And as a whirlwind, it shall come upon all the face of the earth, saith the Lord. Upon my house shall it begin. And from my house shall go forth, saith the Lord. First among you, saith the Lord, who have professed to know my name, and have not known me, and have blasphemed against me in the midst of my house, saith the Lord. So we know that there is going to be like a final burning, which um, basically removes everyone that is of a like a telestial level, because after the burning, the, the earth is going to enter a terrestrial state. And that's why we have to become quickened and translated and, 
and that's going to have, have to happen for everyone that's going to be around for the millennium. So I remember someone in seminary around that same time, they actually brought up this scripture, and that always stuck in my mind. And um, I think maybe they were right, you know. Um, it really did kind of start as a, a whirlwind <laughs> upon my house, literally. Uh, you know, the house of the Lord was right there as the the tornado went through. And I think that that was like obviously symbolic for what was about to happen. Yeah, if you believe that we're in the seventh seal right now, in that it opened in the year 2000, uh, you know, this happened just a few months before the year 2000 started. And, um, and we entered this new millennium. Um, we, may, we may not be during in that millennium period when Christ is here on the earth, but, you know, the actual millennium, uh, according to the Gre Gregorian calendar, did start. And um, it's just, it, it's just fascinating. It's too much to be coincidence, don't you think? Let, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this, but... Um, let me see if there's any, anything here. Doctrine and Covenants 1.12.8. And that I may visit them in the day of visitation when I shall unveil my face, un unveil the face of my covering to appoint the portion of, of the oppressor among hypocrites, uh, where there is gnashing of teeth if they reject my servants and my testimony, which I have revealed unto them. Um. Now, oops. Now it's it's interesting here. Gosh dang it! I'm, I apologize. Let me get back down to where I was. Twenty-two. Um, th this part right here, I think, is interesting. Okay, and this I think gets into one of the other topics that I talk about on my. Uh, channel narcissism in verse 26 it says first among those among you saith the Lord who have professed to know my name and have not known me and have blasphemed against me um, behold I the Lord have looked upon you and have seen abominations in the church that professes my name that's doctrine and covenants 54 so it's really important to understand the difference between the wheat and the tares. And I think the way that you can look at it is through the lens of narcissism. Um, it's my belief that uh, if you have a narcissistic personality, you're basically following an, an evil path. And the thing about it, though, is that there are certain people that are narcissists that they're, they're not going to be just like obviously bad. They're actually going to imitate that that which is good right they they want to give off the appearance that they're good for for whatever reason they have ulterior motives uh there's some people that come to church for the wrong reasons uh it could be that they're coming just for social reasons it could be that they grew up in the church and it's just kind of like they're just going along and just going along with whatever their parents want but their heart really isn't in it um you do have those those wolves in sheep's clothing that will come in and then they'll uh, try and get people to follow them out of the church or or maybe they you know you have people that um, are seeking for uh, high up church callings because not for the right reasons but because they they want to have that um, validation or they want to have that attention and praise from people and that was kind of like the main problem uh, that was going on in the church during Christ's day is that you had all these Pharisees and um, doctors of the law and scribes and stuff that their heart wasn't really uh, rooted in the gospel or in truth. They were doing it because it was a cultural thing and they were doing it for the praise of man, you know, um, becoming rabbis for, for praise. And um, that definitely happens outside of the church, but it happens in the church, too. And it's like the Lord is saying here that he's going to cleanse his His house first. That uh, that's where the separation is going to be begin between wheat and tares. You have wheat that's real, that's useful, that produces fruit, and it's something that's useful for humans. 
And then you have tears, which are just weeds, and they don't do anything for you. And they they just take up space and, you know, they look like wheat, but they are not wheat. And you do not want to have those mixed in with your wheat. Um, so so I, th I think that's interesting. I think maybe the, the tornado was a warning that this separation was going to start between wheat and tares. And um, all this... Uh, destruction and, and stuff was gonna what was gonna begin uh, I'm gonna move on to the next scripture here now this is why I think a whirlwind or whirlwinds may be a symbol of um, being translated and quickened uh, this is second Kings 2 and this is talking about Elijah uh, and we know that Elijah was was translated right so, uh, and interestingly, in uh, verse 11, it says, And it came to pass, as they went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. I'm going to click on chariot. Uh, Abraham 2.7 For I am the Lord thy God, I dwell in heaven, the earth is my footstool, footstool. I stretch my hand over the sea, and it obeys my voice. I cause the wind and the fire to be my chariot. I say to the mountains, depart hence, and behold, they are taken away by a whirlwind in an instant, suddenly. So, okay, so that, that's interesting because we know that this verse right here is talking about the translation of Elijah. Um, a chariot of fire and horses of fire and, and part of them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And then here in Abraham, in the Pearl of Great Price, it again, uh, you know, it's a footnote for this scripture in 2 Kings. And 2 Kings is talking about being translated. So I think that you can relate being translated to this scripture in Abraham and it's talking about I say to the mountains depart hence which it makes me wonder is that is this kind of like talking about temples or going to the temple you know could you plug that word in I say to the temples and of course the people going to the temple depart hence and behold they are taken away by a whirlwind or in other words they are translated, they are uh, caught up, they are quickened in an instant, suddenly. That is fascinating, I think. Uh, let me know what, what you think. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on here. Um, Job 38, verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. And I'm not going to read what it said because it doesn't really, I think, relate to what we're talking about. Although this chapter is talking about um, essentially the, I think, the pre-existence because it, the heading here says, God asked Job where he was when the foundations of the earth were laid, when the morning stars sang together, and when all the sons of God shouted for joy. So it's talking about the, the pre-existence. Uh, this this chapter but the the Lord's voice came out of a whirlwind so you know that that's another thing to, to think about um, let's see we already read that actually okay now on the flip side in the scriptures a whirlwind is also associated with um, destruction and the Lord's anger and wrath in Jeremiah Jeremiah 23 verse 19 behold a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury even a grievous whirlwind it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked so and let's look at this footnote okay this let's see I think this is actually a, okay third Nephi uh, chapter 21 verses 20 to 21 for it shall come to pass saith the, the father that 
At that day, whosoever will not repent and come unto my beloved son, them will I cut off from among my people, O house of Israel. And I will execute vengeance and fury upon them, even as upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. Okay, so it seems like a whirlwind for the righteous is a good thing, and a whirlwind for the wicked is a bad thing. And I don't know if there's yet another meaning there that maybe when the righteous and the church become translated, that's going to be uh, bad for those that are um, not translated. And again, I don't know. There, um, there's people like Watcher Palmer that believes that will be uh, caught up and in taken into, you know, the midst of the pillar of heaven and then come right back down. And that could be. Uh, there's also the other view that a lot of other Christians believe that uh, we're going to actually be taken away and not be here on the earth for when uh, this major tribulation period is going on so that we can escape the judgments of God. And um, I think that that could be as well. Um, and there's more that you can actually study into that because we know that um, during that time, when we're translated, we're probably not going to just be, you know, doing nothing. We're probably going to continue doing the Lord's work. And um, Jody Stoddard made an interesting uh, note about how, you know, we've gone from home teaching to ministering. And ministering is something that's typically associated with angels, you know, ministering to the children of men. And so is, is that going to be what's going to happen? You know, are we like actually going to leave? There's going to be people that are left behind, which for them, you know, us leaving would be a bad thing, of course. Um, and then are we going to be ministering to those that are left behind for the grape harvest? You know, uh, I, I just did a video about how in Jerusalem just a couple days ago, there was a, um, a the wildfire that's going on there that started where it, it burned up this um, winery on the day that the grape harvest was supposed to occur, <laughs> right? So uh, I find that interesting. But um, anyway, so it looks like whirlwinds are, are bad news for the wicked. In 3 Nephi 8, um, this is, of course, before makes uh, Christ makes his appearance in the Americas. 3 Nephi 8, verse 16 and there were some who were carried away in the whirlwind, and whither they went no man knoweth, save they, save they know that they were carried away. Um, so I don't, I don't really know. It, it seems to be that the context here is that uh, these were wicked people that were destroyed. Let's click on this footnote. It says Daniel brings up Daniel 11:40, and at the time of the end shall the king of the south push him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over yeah so it uh, I, it's, seems like these people were probably uh, probably killed uh, because of the whirlwind and then I'm just going to finish it up here. Doctrine and Covenant 63, verse 6. Wherefore, verily I say, let the wicked take heed, and let the rebellious fear and tremble. <coughs> Excuse me. And let the unbelieving hold their lips, for the day of wrath shall come upon them as a whirlwind, and all flesh shall know that I am. So, uh, so I, hopefully I've given you some things to think about. Um, I think that these are definitely things to pay attention to. Uh, you know, this this tornado happened a long time ago now. Um, but I, I think that it was a definite sign of the times and reason to uh, for us to believe that we really are close to the second coming. And in probably close to the the quickening event as well. I'm going to do another video talking about 
um, things that I've noticed in, in conference and in footnotes where it seems like the general authorities, specifically President Nelson and a few others, have been dropping hints about being quickened and about uh, leaving, you know, this place or our, our, our homes. But that's going to have to be in another video. Um, now, uh, before I let you go, make sure to check out the description box because I'm going to link all these different videos for you if you want to look more into the Salt Lake City tornado, um, see some archival footage. Um, there's a article article here that talks about it from the National Weather Service. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the description box. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, please like it. Um, also, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'm going to be putting out a lot of content. I think a lot of good stuff that, that you'll find interesting. Um, but thanks for spending the time with me today, and I'll talk to you next time.